Well, hello, hello, everybody. Uh, I would love to introduce our Manhattan Borough President, Mark Levine. Thank you so much, Noel Hidalgo, and welcome, everybody. Happy Open Data Week. It is wonderful to see so many community board leaders here. Really thrilled you're taking advantage of this incredible asset. This has been a wonderful week. We kicked it off on Roosevelt Island at the Cornell campus uh, on Saturday. Uh, Noel and the team ran an amazing all day conference, but it's not over yet. Tomorrow I'm actually speaking on a panel hosted by WEACT, many of you will know from uptown, on climate and open data. Uh, so come on by if you, if you want to explore that topic as well. Um, we're marking 10 years since a landmark law that um, really forced the city to begin to release data in a way that the public, that leaders like you can access. And the impact has just been huge. It's really just opened up a world of possibilities for activists, for people inside in government and out, for reporters, for regular New Yorkers to understand what's happening in the city and to make it better. It's really achieved enormous things already. And uh, the folks at Beta NYC have just been huge drivers of this success. It's an amazing nonprofit, which Noel, of course, is our wonderful leader of. Um, but there, there's much more to do. I really think there's probably no aspect of life in the city that couldn't be improved by better, smarter use of data, whether it's transportation, uh, environmental efficiency, um, civil rights, um, health, for sure. And um, this training session is about helping all of you uh, begin to see the tools that are available and put them to use on behalf of, as community board members, on behalf of your boards or your communities or your cause. Uh, you really couldn't have a better uh, group teaching you uh, than the one we have today. You're going to learn a lot, and uh, I'm really glad you could all join us. So uh, thanks, everybody, and enjoy the session. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. Um, and now I get to introduce our wonderful open data ambassadors. Um, we have Kay and Anatole. And somewhere on the line, we have Star. Uh, and so now I'm going to hand it off to them to continue our introduction to Open Data. Well, thank you, everyone, and um, welcome to Open Data 101. My name is Ogunke, or you could just call me K for short. A little bit about myself. I'm a Brooklyn native, been here my whole life. I'm a huge fan of trying cuisines from all over the world, and I think I'm in one of the best cities to do so. Um, I've been with the Open Data team here at Do It. Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications for five years um, as an open data coordinator and a little bit of a program analyst, making improvements wherever I can. Um, I'm essentially a librarian for all of the data that is on the open data portal. And this is my first year as an open data ambassador. So I'm really excited to get to speak with you all today. The material for this training was created by New York City Mayor Office of Data Analytics and the Civic Technology Organization, Beta NYC. Thanks, Noel. So let's get into a little bit of a brief history about NYC Open Data. You might be asking yourself, what is open data? Well, quite simply, it's making government data accessible to the public. And sometimes we tend to think of the word data and its relation, NYC open data's relation to the word data as like this 21st century phenomenon, when in fact, there's been a long history of efforts to make government more transparent. In this training, we'll get into a little bit of the history and the historical developments that led to NYC open data as we have it today. Our journey starts in the late 19th century, early 20th century, and what we have here is a picture of the city record. It existed as a publication started in 1873, available both in print and now online. It was a central repository for information about city solicitations, public notices, purchases, and hiring. It was started to make government more transparent in the wake of city scandals. You could probably 
think of scandals like Boss Tweed and Tammany Hall. If you haven't heard of him, it's an interesting story. Boss Tweed was a prolific government figure in the late 19th century. He was involved in so many areas of city government in New York. He would use his power to buy loyalty, control access to jobs, and access to city projects. And some estimates say that within his tenure, he stole up to $200 million in taxpayer dollars. Actually, let's also have a look at what it looks like now. So here you got a little screenshot. And check this out. Anyone recognize this name? It's still available in print today. Here, one thing I wanted to also show, we got some public hearings. Here we have it online and you could visit this website. And I did a little quick check just to see if what's in print is also online. And I found a uniform land use review um, in Brooklyn, and I saw it both in the print and online. So you can know that this works. So if we jump a few decades later, 1960s to the 1970s, we get the Freedom of Information Law or Freedom of Information Act that's passed at the federal level in 1967. And then um, is passed at the New York state level in 1974. A key distinction from what was made available in the city record was that this act made data available upon request. If you knew what you were looking for, you can ask for it. And if the information exists, it would be shared with you. If it could not, if it was classified, a public facing reason would be provided to you as to why it could not. FOIA or FOIL was advocated for by people wanting to increase access to government documents and a better understanding of why certain classified documents could not be shared. A few decades later, 1993, we have the Public Data Directory created for New York City. In my opinion, this looks like a really, really early version of what we have on the open data portal. Essentially, it made uh, a listing or a subset of data that would be requested by FOIL available. Um, it made it more accessible by providing a listing of the data that agencies already had. And this kind of was in contrast with what FOIL would bring you, whereas the person making the request would have to know in advance what they were looking for. With this directory, you could just look through it and see a listing of what um, agencies had available. Let's have a look and see an example of it. One second. Here, so I had to look at it. I downloaded the old PDF and I'm, I managed to find through, I found something that looks kind of familiar to me in, in my work. So we have variants and right now we have a modern version of it for um, after hour variants for buildings and it, it gives permits for companies to work. So yeah, this is actually an early version, public data directory. So finally in 2012, advocates, city staff, elected officials came together to celebrate the passage of New York City's open data law. While many cities have an open data law or policy as an executive order, New York City's law guarantees that the public will have access to this data in perpetuity, regardless of administration. And that's a key difference between open data and FOIL, in that no one needs to ask for the information. It's already made public by default. So now that we got that history, we got to ask ourselves, what does data look like today? Well, here's a great example. Right now we're looking at Union Square, 14th Street and Broadway. And as you can see, for every hey, page street. Kate, hey, the, the screen isn't uh, refreshing. We're still on the um, uh, 2012 open data law sign. There we are. Okay. So 
yeah, this, if you're seeing, you should see uh, Union Square, uh, 14th Street and Broadway, right? And this is a great illustration of what data looks like today, where you see for every paved street, recycling bin, parking ticket, restaurant inspection, uh, there's a data point available. And thanks to the open data law, agencies work to make that data readily available. So let's make some key distinctions here. What makes something open data? Well, the main thing here is that it has to be machine readable, right? It, it means that a computer should be able to understand it and it should be available in that standardized format. This can include maps like you may see here, but key distinction, right? We have, let's say a data set on the portal, New York City trees, where each row is a tree and columns indicate the tree size, uh, species, latitude, longitude, and more. Um, whereas here we have an original image and plan for Central Park. There's no course, there's no corresponding table. There's no corresponding uh, table with rows and columns available for that. So this would not necessarily be open data or what you could find on open data. Another distinction is that open data is not private or confidential. We go through great lengths to review for personal information and ensure that it is not posted publicly. There may be some exceptions and you're looking at one right now on the screen. You should see citywide payroll data. Well, this is a data set of all of New York City's employees and their salaries. And that's a clear exception to the privacy or confidentiality. As of this year, we're averaging over 1 million users and visitors each year. We have more than 3,000 data sets, and this is all made possible by a network of over 100 open data coordinators like myself, across city agencies, offices, and commissions. So let's have an overview of the open data portal itself. If you went ahead and visit nyc.gov forward slash open data, it'll bring you to this page. And this is exactly what you'd see. You can go ahead and search in key terms to go ahead and have a look. Otherwise, you can go ahead and click data at the top nav there. If you were to, it'll bring you to this page where you can see that we group some data sets for easy access based on certain categories. like by agency, by category, popular data sets, and the newest data sets. Taking a step back to that landing page, if you wanted to go ahead and put a term, let's say like 311. And by the way, um, 311 is a government resource for assistance outside of emergency situations. Um, it's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, available in over 175 languages and covers roughly 3,600 government services. Available on phone, web, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and other mobile apps. And goes to create one of the most interesting data sets I think we have on the portal. So if you were to go ahead and look up 311, you get a listing by relevance, and you should see the data set that we currently maintain for 301 from 2010 to present. By clicking that link, you will go ahead and be, and you would see our primer page for the data set. This page has some key information when you start to have a look and investigate and explore a new data set. Let's have a look at what we can see here you get a sense of the size of the data set. And as you can see here, we have over 27 uh, million rows, 41 columns. And you can see that each row is a 311 service request. That other highlight just came up, lets you know when the data set was last updated. And that's pretty important. You wanna make sure as you're looking through data to make sure if it's current, if it's still relevant. So it's another key thing to watch out for and look out for when you go ahead and visit a data set and its primer page. Another thing is you want to get a sense of how often it updates. 
sets expectations. You can come back and check it. You know, it's supposed to update daily. And this lets you know how frequently accessed the data set is. Over 400,000 views and just about the same in downloads. Pretty popular. So one of the most important pieces to the Primer page, and I just want to highlight this, is a data set data dictionary. It carries some key information that helps you understand the data set better. Um, it usually captures more of the nuance, the limitations to a data set. So I think it's really important whenever you're exploring a data set, just have a look at it. If we were to look in this data dictionary for 311, this is what we'll see. So you'd have a column for the names that's in the data set as it presents on the portal. You will have a column for the description, expected values, which is really helpful. You know, it, it, it'll give you the distinction between the different type of values you should expect to see. You should be able to explain blanks. And then you also have notes provided by the agency as well. So back to the primer page. If you wanted to go ahead and explore the data, as we've been talking about, you'd go ahead and click view data at the top, right? So let's get into filtering with open data, right? As we know, we have 27 million rows. There's no way we're just gonna scroll through all of that. This is how the data table would look. Again, with um, 41 columns, you might wanna have a look at relevant columns that will help you filter this data in a relevant way, right? And right now we're looking at a complaint type. Every service, every request for service is filed under a particular complaint type. 41 of these columns. And here we have a row of data. You can see some fields that also correspond, a unique key, created date, more than 27 million rows, right? So let's look into how we could filter to make things easier for us. All right. So here, in the filter tab on the right panel, once you're viewing the data, you would go ahead and click that. And that'll open up this panel here where you can choose which column or field you would like to go ahead and filter on. And right now we have community board chosen and we have community board is one in Queens. And as you can see, That'll make your records drop from 27 million to 546,000. Again, this is a snapshot. I'll be doing this live. The numbers might be different because we're constantly updating, right? But much more manageable. And that's the key thing about filtering on the open data portal. Here's an example of a more complex filter. Right now, we still have the same community board, community board one in Queens. We have a created date going after the first of the year. And we're looking for items that were assigned to the Department of Sanitation. Another key thing I want to point out is that once you added those filters, the numbers dropped even more. So let me go ahead and show you just how easy it is to do live. You can feel free to follow along. I'm gonna go ahead and make my way to the portal and I'll show you how this all works. Exciting, a live demo. <laughs> Thanks, Noel. So let me do exactly as I showed you, right? Let's go ahead and punch in 311. Here's that same data set we talked about. View data. Gonna go ahead and move tiles out the way. All right. So let's go ahead and get a created date. We want that field, right? Because we want everything in the beginning of the year. Something important I wanted to show you was uh, we have some operators here, right? We want everything after. So you can actually drop down and select. Uh, you could have is as a strict. Um, operator for just a specific date only. You can do after. So you start from a specific date and it shows everything after that. 
And that's what I'm doing. You can move through this by clicking the year, stepping back one, but we'll stay in 2022, picking January 1st. So right now we just created a filter for everything after January 1st. Let's add on some more. We wanted everything from sanitation, right? So let's make sure we have that chosen. And I'll go ahead and add on one more. I also want to do a different community board. Cool, got it. Um, some things I wanted to show you with the operator once more, when you're entering things that is gonna look through text, you can use the contains. I think that it works in a more human readable way for me. Um, let's say if I didn't necessarily know exactly the acronym for an agency, you know, you can, you can get away with a little bit here and it actually searches just fine. So as you can see, I applied it and you wanna make sure these blue um, check marks are ticked off. As you can see, we already got it shrinking down from 27 or so million. And now we got sanitation, we got records after the first of this year. Let's do one more. A little nod to community board 10 from Manhattan. Let's see what we have. So about 607 rows, right? For uh, assigned to, uh, to sanitation and all coming from community board 10 in Manhattan. From here, you can actually save this if you created an account. Otherwise you can export it outside and I'll show you how to do that right now. So have a look. You go here to export and you have a variety of formats that you could use, CSV, JSON, et cetera. So yeah, you could use this outside of the portal as well, or you can save it to your account by creating an account. And I highly recommend it. It's pretty fun to keep track of what you're doing. So just wanna make sure we're, we're, we're all following along. Everything seems good, thumbs up. All right, great, great. So let's have a look at visualizing the data, right? This is the next step. So if you wanted to visualize the data, same thing on the primer page of the data set. Go ahead, instead of view data this time, you click visualize. That'll bring you to this page. And you have filter options. You'll be able to select chart types. Here they are. The portal does a pretty good job of recommending what kind of chart types go along with the data that you're looking at already. And you can see it highlighted by the little green dots. So you can play around and get a sense of what you really need. Right now, we're looking at a pie chart here. To the right, we have our filter. And as you can see, it's looking for created date um, March 21st, 2021. It's really versatile here. You get to pick your dimensions, what you want to group by, and you also want to make sure you're counting by the actual records and make sure that's accurate. So with that, as you can see, we got 311 increase on March 21st, 2021, broken down by borough, and you could easily create this if you wanted to. Let's have a look at another type. Got a plot map here. This is how you select that one. And this is possible with 311 because we do have latitude and longitude, right? In this case, we have a filter and we're choosing records from yesterday. You can do that. And here we have 301 requests submitted on a single day. Real easy. Here we got a bar chart and we start to dive a little bit deeper, right? So you, you see the selector for the chart type for bar chart. We're breaking down by specific complaint types, right? Still measuring by count of rows. You got the agency we wanna hear from, and we got our specific date range between the first and the second of 2021. And here you can see when you break that down by your complaint type, got some things like street conditions, street light conditions, traffic signal, et cetera. 
So you can kind of do this for your area as well. So thanks for sitting with me through this demo. Let's have a look at some tools that really took their use of open data to another level, I could say. For one, we'll start with the open data project gallery. Um, there's many online tools that pull data from New York City open data. You can find examples, and I also have a few keyed up. So I'll go ahead and pull those up. One sec. All right, this is a cool one, right? Uh, WeGov, NYC WeGov. So this one is taking a look currently at um, capital projects. You can see the number of projects active in New York, the original estimation for the cost where we currently are. You get a listing of what kind of projects are going around in the city. It's also um, powering a map here where you can see specific jobs going on and you could select. This is kind of a really cool one to see capital projects going on in the city. This is another one here I have, uh, Crash Mapper. Uh, gives you a sense of how safe the streets are in New York. Here, we already have it filtered for February, 2022. And the cool thing you could do is you could add on boundaries. So we got our boroughs. If you wanted to switch from that from our neighborhood, you can look at that. I'm originally from Canarsie. So you could actually go ahead and zoom in. I think it's taking a little time to load, but yeah. All the issues that happened where I grew up around. And then you can also filter for a more current timestamp. Great table here, letting you know what the colors mean. Um, it has size differences. And this is all built on open data. Oh, yes. NYC.gov forward slash maps. Maps built directly by the city. You saw you scroll through a couple of them. This is a pretty cool one. Street trees built directly by the city. As you can see, I'm a little Brooklyn biased, but let's have a look. I mean, it's pretty cool. It gives you, as we mentioned before, you might've heard about the street trees data set we have, the diameter, the species, lat and long, and this is how we're able to uh, plot this. And this is built directly from the city, not necessarily on open data. We have a data set of it provided to us, but this is built directly by the city as a map. Just wanted to show you this. I thought it was pretty cool. My favorite kind of trees are weeping willows. And I think my dentist used to have one, but I don't think I can see it on this data set here. Let's have a look at another map. This one was pretty cool. I took a look through it yesterday. And honestly, I was kind of blown away. So I'm just going to go through just a bit of a journey. I mean, I used to be up and down Eastern Parkway a lot. Here we have the, mu the museum. The armory I used to pass around here as a kid when my dad used to drive. Had no idea it was a landmark. I mean, I should have known, but yeah, this data set confirms that. You get to see a lot of information. You can see the style that it has. So this is pretty cool stuff, I think. And um, this deck will be provided after our chat. Um, we'll also be able to drop links if anyone asks. If there's any questions at all, feel free to queue them up in the chat. You know, um, I'll be able to go through them with you. I'm going to make some time for all of that. So 
now that we have a sense of the history, we took a look at how to go ahead and dive in on open data sets, how to filter. You know, you may want to ask yourself, how do you answer questions, right? Sometimes you can just go ahead and look at um, open data sets just from a exploratory frame, right? You just want to go and see what's out there. But sometimes open data is really used to answer questions. And you just saw some examples of that, right? People keeping track of trees and such things. So one of the first things you want to do when you're trying to do that is define the problem you're trying to solve. So let's say, for example, here, if you look to the right, we're trying to implement a support program for restaurants consisting of small grants and loans. And one of the problems you're trying to solve is determining which restaurants should receive funding. Well, the first thing you want to do in that case is go to open data. You might want to search for terms like business and restaurants and try to keep good keywords to allow you to do that. If you were to go ahead and do those searches, you can see an example of the data sets that we have to your right, legally operating businesses, DOH and inspection results, biannual pedestrian counts. And then from that short list of data sets that should be able to work and help you answer your questions, you wanna to start to go ahead and hone those questions and ask specific questions that get at the problem, right? So from those results that we saw, you might want to ask yourself, you know, which restaurants received a grade A uh, restaurant inspection? Um, which ones employ the largest amount of people? Uh, are restaurants, which restaurants are found in highly trafficked areas? That might be relevant to the question you're trying to ask. So you got those more specified questions. You got your data sets. I really highly recommend, just like when we looked at 311, go ahead and have a look at the data dictionary. There's a lot more nuance there, um, details, limitations, as you can see here. So the question here was, does the business acceleration program provide financial support? And that was one of those that came up when we looked up business and restaurant. Upon closer observation, you can see that, no, it does not provide financial support. It provides other types of support assistance, but not financial. So that kind of, if you were using businesses from this data set, you could see that it, you know, maybe they would be open to financial support because they're not already receiving it. This is the kind of context you want to do when you go ahead and use open data to answer questions. Another thing I really recommend when in doubt, contact the open data help desk. The contact us page is at the top right. You could go ahead, you can provide the URL you're asking about, send us a nice note. My team here will be able to review it and look at it and we'll be able to route it to the relevant agency. If that agency has um, an answer or if it's a data set that doesn't exist yet, that agency will be able to tell you when that data would be published. If it can't be published, you'll also get a public facing reason as to why that can't be. So yeah, don't hesitate, reach out, we're here to help. So we're framing specific questions that get at the problem. Another thing I recommend alongside with the data dictionary is actually to have a look at the data itself, find those relevant columns that can help you answer those questions. Here we're looking at restaurant inspections, right? One of my favorite data sets, we got the, DBA column, doing business as, violation code, grades. Seems pretty good when we were talking about filtering, just like we went through 311, right? So now that you got those data sets, you got the context, you got the relevant columns you might use for your analysis, go ahead and get started. Summarize, um, filter through the data set and see what you get in terms of insight. From there, once you conduct your analysis and you get your summarized results, you can go ahead and give your recommendations or make some decisions on your own. For example, we were looking at the restaurant inspections and we asked that question, which restaurants received an A rating? And we were looking to think about perhaps providing restaurants with A rating, the funding. Well, in this case, you can see there's a large amount of restaurants 
but there's also a larger amount here and a little caveat with no value in the data set. Now, you might want to look through the data dictionary, see what's that about. Um, but without this kind of summary analysis and breakdown, you really wouldn't know what you were looking at if you were just staring at a bunch of rows, right? So it's important to do some form of analysis so you can see the limitations of uh, what you're working with. Maybe you might uh, switch goals and, and switch questions and move on to a different way of finding out who's eligible for your program for funding. So when you're informed by your results and analysis, go ahead, provide your stakeholders with recommendations, make the, your decisions on, on your own as well. And that's a quick run through of how you go about answering questions and solving problems with open data. So let's talk about how you can get involved um, every day, even if you just want to get started. Again, contact us. You could go ahead and reach out to nyc.gov forward slash open data forward slash engage. We have gotten requests for partnerships. Um, Pre-COVID people wanted us to talk. I mean, it's all possible. And, and in fact, the same kind of engagement led to submissions um, for our project gallery open for Open Data Week as well. So yeah, feel free to reach out, send us a note and have a look um, at other people's um, work, nyc.gov forward slash open data forward slash projects. Got a wealth of tools, maps that were built that you can have a look at and should be able to inspire you if you have questions about what you could do in your area of New York. Also, last but not least, you know, it's open data week. Today's the ninth. We're going all the way to the 13th. Plenty of, of activities, sessions to join. You know, don't let this be the only one. Join some more. You can learn so much. There's some great exhibitions out there. And, uh, you know, it's for all levels. I'm looking forward to the weekend as well. I'm going to go to an exhibit here in the Navy Yard. So highly recommend you go ahead, sign right back in and sign up for some more sessions. Pausing right here, folks. Um, happy to have my team come off from mute. Let's see if we have any questions. Great, thank you. Round of applause. Um, so there are a few ways that you can ask questions. Um, if you want to ask an anonymous question, you can use the chat function and message Beta NYC or Kate Nicholson uh, or Key directly, and we will um, answer the question. Or you can come off a of mute and turn on your camera, uh, and Kay, Anatole, and Star will be able to answer them. So who would like to go first? You don't have to be so polite now, everybody. <laughs> I work for the open data team, by the way. So, you know, if there's questions about that. You know, we actually manage the portal. So yeah, happy to answer any questions mm -hmm. you have. And if I can't, I think I know where to route. You couldn't get any better expert. Yes, we see Pat has unmuted themselves. Yeah, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm completely overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope in a good way. <laughs> so I think it's something that I think all of us, we have to play with it before yes. we would have any questions for you. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Yes, I know but it's a lot to take in. I just said the same thing, yeah. <laughs> I know it's a lot to take in, but once you start to, to dive in, I mentioned... One of my favorite data sets was the restaurant inspection. Um, I was telling my team here before you all got on, it's, it's really how I explore the city. You know, I look up, it has a list of cuisines and it seems intimidating at first, but afterwards it gets really fun. You get to learn a lot about the city. Thank you. Um, does, the if, data, <laughs> does the data include BSA decisions? BSA decisions. I. Uh, remember some BSA decisions data sets and this is from my personal experience if I don't I think if I wasn't on the team I wouldn't be able to answer it so easily but yeah and I also recommend just do a quick search 
um, you, you you should be able to see that. You'll see what we have. If not, feel free to contact us. Let us know the data set that you would like to see, and we can go ahead and reach out to BSA. Thank you. Sure. Um, I also want to throw in here that we developed a series of uh, classes and um, that this open data class is uh, essentially a distillation of. So if you're looking for like a how-to, um, we, we have these things called data journeys um, that are really geared toward community board members. Um, and we will be doing follow-up classes, walking you through various data journeys. Um, so that way you can look at liquor license, noise complaints, uh, uh, quality of life issues, et cetera. Anatole, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I'm going to piggyback on, <clears throat> on what you said, Noel, and then kind of make a pitch for not just you know using open data, but also the open data program, open data ambassador program, um, especially to uh, you know the other community board members. Um, you know, I'm, I'm from a different borough, but I'm a community board member, and I was inspired to join up, uh, you know, as, as part of the open data ambassador program because so many of the questions we keep getting from the community right are um are sometimes easily answered <laughs> by by knowing that this exists so uh you know i i I'd heard of open data in the past but uh, you know uh, until going through this program I, I didn't really understand the you know the, the depth of data that's available to us and uh you know next time someone comes and complains about a bike lane you know you can kind of look at crash mapper and you know kind of see whether you know um how, what how that how the proposal will affect things and you know what the reality of the reality or the history of that intersection is or you know of that area is so and of course you know there's all the other examples that Kay shared uh my uh my personal um favorite project is squirrel tails uh some brave soul took a 2018 um database of a uh, squirrel survey and then created this thing that takes parts of that squirrel survey and uh, puts it on the map, exactly. <laughs> and it puts it on the map uh, of, of Central Park and turns it into a poem. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know if this will be, very, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, very useful, in, you know, if, if, in, in, if, if for a Queen's land use committee uh, meeting or you know at one of our uh, monthly meetings but full board meetings but um but yeah that's just the kind of stuff that you know you can have fun with but also be informed by so uh highly recommend of course you know playing around and getting your feet wet in the uh open data portal but also you know reach out to beta nyc and uh um and uh, and in our uh, the uh, the open data uh, office folks and you know i i recommend uh uh, going through the program and doing it. Thanks, Anatole. Appreciate this. Any other questions queued up? Happy to answer them. I'm here. We're here for some time. Speaking of which, uh, time check. We're good. Yes, uh, we have uh, either. Do you want to go to eight minutes till the end of the hour? Sure. Uh, otherwise, happy to, you know, happy we, to. yeah. Uh, Carter Booth has a question. Hey, Carter. Hey guys, I'm I'm outside on on a phone, but I I wanted to uh, first of all thank you guys for this great presentation. Sure. Um, secondly, you know, there's so many projects that people, different people, work on and put together. Is there a way to better share all of those projects so that other people can use them? Uh, the open data is a little bit intimidating, I think, for a lot of folks when they jump in, particularly as a, a lot of the demographics for the community boards skew a, a touch older. And, uh, and it's a little bit difficult to start using. But when you see the results, I think that uh, folks are probably will power through to, to see the, you know, the great benefits of a lot of the, the information that's available. Is there, is there a bit? a good place or a repository for community boards that can look to see other projects that have been done or um, anything along those lines? Um, I think that's a great question. Um, 
from my end, I am aware of the project gallery, but I also want to let um, Noel probably get a chance at this because I know he works really closely with the uh, community boards as well. And perhaps it's a more distilled list of tools that's ready. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the, the community gallery that exists on the open data portal is the one that kind of like hits all of the keynotes um, in the sense that, you know, like, it's free to use. Uh, it's not hidden behind some type of proprietary infrastructure uh, um, in the sense that like, you know, it's gonna be extracting data as you try to get data. Uh, it's it's a really good portal to see all of the, the things that we recommend using, um, that we recommend looking at that uses open data. Um, there's also a bunch of different city uh, websites that are out there that that are essentially either consuming open data or that data that's in that website ends up on open data portal um and then um and that's something that moda and beta nyc have identified of like how do we catalog more of these systems um so that's one of the goals that we have um, and then another thing that we have is um, on the Beta NYC website, if you're looking for tools, just as like a plug, tools that really are focused on community boards, it's uh, beta.nyc forward slash products, um, where you'll find um, tools like BoardStat, which is a 311 dashboard, uh, board uh, boundaries map, which is a politically, it's like a political and administrative uh, website so that way you can see overlapping where the community board boundaries are with the various elected officials. Um, you'll also find SLAM, which is the State Liquor Authority uh, um, website. Uh, some technical tools like a batch geocoder. So if you want to make your own map, um, there's a bunch of different tools on there. Um, but Carter, if you're talking about like one index or glossary that held, has a highlight. I think that's a, a wiki that um, uh, we will be working toward in the next year or so. That's exactly uh, what I was referring to. So that's great, thanks. No, if I can chime in too. Um, I think you mentioned it at one point, but uh, Beta NYC, my name's Kate, by the way, and I work at Beta NYC with Noel and uh, we do a series um, and we'll hopefully pick it up when we have time after Open Data Week again. Um, but we have an open data journey series where we take you through a journey of an issue um, that's like a civic issue, and we explore different data tools and data sets. I'm getting an echo. Um, sorry, I'm going to mute somebody. We explore uh, different data sets uh, through tools. Uh, sorry, we explore issues um, using different open data driven tools. And right now we have four of them up on our YouTube and we're definitely interested in hearing what topics you'd be interested in exploring. Um, and we would work with you or on our own uh, on our, with our civic innovation fellows to put together uh, a journey that would explore those issues um, at a community level. By the way, Kate is the brains behind the whole scheduling platform that's been getting all of the open data sessions up on the website. So. We have uh -huh. much praise to. I don't know if that's a compliment quite yet. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Pat, uh, your hand is up. Could I ask you if there's a? Do you have data for EDC, the Housing Authority, the uh, Department of Education, and HHC um, on the site? I believe we do. Um, I think it's it still is worth a search on the portal. If you can head over there. Just going to drop this in the chat as well for easy access. There are some agencies or shall I say authorities that are state authorities that don't have data on the open data portal. Um, if you're looking for federal data, that would be on a federal data website. Um, and then there's also state data that also exists on the on the on the state website. Um, so the New York City data portal is one of many data portals. Uh, where you will find, you know, New York City government data, um, but there is data about New York City that exists on other uh, data portals. Well, these are agencies that all have contracts with the city, 
even though they're gigantic uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and you, if you're looking for uh, contract data, um, you may want to take a look at Checkbook uh, by the city's comptroller. Um, uh, that is an easy to use interface to look up city contracts and how the money has been spent. Uh, Pat? All right, thank you. Is it possible to arrange to have this presentation given to an individual community board? Yes. Uh, we, Beta NYC, will be focused. Uh, this is kind of like the teaser. This is the introduction. Uh, I'm going to throw my email address in here. Um, we're going to be partnering with uh, elected officials and community boards. Um, we have some. You know, there's only so much we can do um, in this hour, um, but we have some deeper uh, uh, classes. Um, that being said, I should also t tell about our radars. So we understand that there is a lot of information that's here. Um, Beta NYC offers a service to community-based organizations, uh, uh, elected officials, uh, com community boards, uh, uh, journalists, and they're called radars, research and data assistance requests. So let's say you're a community board member and you're trying to, you know, exacto knife some data and you don't know how to do it. Um, and you just as you can contact uh, Kay and, and the open data team through the open data portal. Uh, I just threw in a, a link here for radars. Uh, or if you go to the beta dot nyc website um you will be able to find out um uh uh essentially like a web form that you fill out asking for your data request and then we have cuny undergraduate students and associate degree students and grad students that we have respond to these uh inquiries uh and when it gets too difficult for for our team we try to find other organizations that can help uh answer your your technical request Thank you. I'm going. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And we're we're at the hour. Um, so uh, Anatole, congratulations as being the chair of the tech committee for CB2. Um, you and Carter definitely have much to uh, uh, to discuss. Um, and with that, uh, Kay, do you have any closing words? Anatole, do you have any closing words? Well. Just want to make sure. Oh, yeah. OK. Just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for joining. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for sitting through this and learning with me. Um, feel free to contact the Open Data team. Again, um, I posted it in the chat. These slides, decks will, will be available afterwards. So you can go through and make sure you don't miss any links and take your time to explore all of this. I know it, it was a lot, but um, I hope you really get some time to jump into this. Well, you, you did more. it well. Thank you very much. Thank you.